Hi, good evening everyone. Can I get a quick uh, yes in the chat box? If my screen is all well, all visible and even I'm audible. Hi, good evening, Samriti. So we are good to go. Yes, thank you, Prabhnesh. Thank you for the confirmation. Thank you, Dakshini. All right, Samriti. Thank you so much. Okay, so yes, thank you, Soham. All right. Okay. So today we are going to thank you so much everyone. So I'm Adil, Ashish, thank you. So let's get started with the topic today, which is pharmacology top topics and MCQs for FMG 2023. So I'll be taking two sessions of this, one today and the other one tomorrow. And we'll be discussing the important topics and the related MCQ accordingly. So we'll be doing the MCQ and we'll be discussing the topic alongside. Good evening, Bria. So before I actually get started with the topics and uh, I have few announcements from an academy. So let me get it across to all of you. So there is this ultimate revision batch target 150 plus in FMG December 2023 exam. And this actually gets you 150 plus hours of practice sessions, live sessions, tests and discussions, everything together. and. You can get the subscription for 6650, right? And the discount code, you can use Dr. Tiku and you can avail this uh, subscription at this, this discount price. Then the second one is that there is a 20% discount on all the Unacademy subscriptions. Again, the target is FMG 2023 of four months duration. And the offer price slashed from 10,000 to 5,600. So this offer is valid only till 25th of August and so you can avail the code Dr. Tikku to get the discount. And then we have the iconic subscription which includes everything from all the unacademy plus every, uh, you know, all the notes, mentoring sessions, all the, you know, videos and everything together. So it's this full subscription that you can get hold of. And there are durations whether you want it for 6 months, 9 months, 12, 18, 24 and 36 months. So on all these subscriptions you get a 20% discount. Again you need to use the code Dr. Tikku and you can avail uh, these uh, subscriptions at these discounted prices. Alright, so uh, having said that, let's get started with today's session. And I want you all to participate equally. So we are going to put the question forward and you're going to keep the chat box buzzing with your responses, right? I always say it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong at this, at this juncture because this is when you're learning and you're allowed to make mistakes. And this is how you will learn. Whatever your topic, uh, if your topic is strong, you will know. If your topic needs a little more attention, that also you will know. So do not hesitate to attempt the answer or the question and go full on, full on and do not shy away ki I'll be judged, mera galat ho gaya to what will happen. Nothing is going to happen. No one is judging anybody here. We're all here to learn. Okay, so let's get started. And the first question coming up is this. Time required to reach the steady state when we give the dose of a drug. It depends upon dose route of administration, half-life, all of the above. Okay, Dr. Surendra says three. Samriti says four. Dr. Surendra says half. Okay, yeah, three is half-life. Okay. Yes, more responses. Varun says D. Dr. Diary says four. Okay. If you see the question, they've given you a hint actually. Okay? Time required to reach a steady state when we give the dose of a drug depends upon. So, this is a hint aapko already they've given you in the question itself. So, the correct answer here is half life. Okay? Time is not going to be 
right it is half life so and how many half lives are required to reach a steady state concentration how many half lives are required to reach a steady very good dr sundar it is 4 to 5 half lives theek hai ye concept remember this because this has been asked 4 to 5 half lives is required to reach a steady state concentration so ye ek diagram hai or the chart graph hai which is half life versus the plasma concentration so you see between 4 and 5 half lives यहां से योर ग्राफ इज ऑलरेडी गेटिंग अ प्लेटो यहां पे इट वाज राइजिंग स्टेडीली एंड फ्रॉम हियर इट जस्ट प्लेटोस सो दिस इज अ स्टेडी स्टेट कंसंट्रेशन एंड फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द ड्रग्स द स्टेडी स्टेट कंसंट्रेशन इज द थेरेपुटिक कंसंट्रेशन और द इफेक्टिव कंसंट्रेशन सो अबाउट 4 टू 5 हाफ लाइव्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू रीच अ स्टेडी स्टेट कंसंट्रेशन सो वेयर इज दिस कांसेप्ट इंपॉर्टेंट लाइक वी स्टडी drugs which have very long half lives long half lives and they need to be given for emergency so what you do there you give a loading dose because you give loading dose you give uh, doses together so that the half life is achieved instantaneously where we cannot wait in emergencies so yahan se ek aur question aata hai loading dose of a drug depends on so can anybody tell me i will not put any choices just tell me loading dose of a drug depends on what can you tell me what does a loading dose of a drug depend on very good sumriti it depends on volume of distribution so see d either be a d either be so you make out remember no it is volume of distribution so remember dd theek hai easy to remember loading dose depends on the volume of distribution theek hai yeah yeah surendra so remember dd yeah all right let's go to the second question which of the following drugs can be removed by dialysis can be removed by dialysis digoxin salicylates benzodiazepines organophosphates okay 1 1 1 means digoxin okay 1 4 organophosphates okay or more options aur kya hai answers 1 2 okay organophosphate all right all right let me first uh, tell you what is the concept here you know that dialysis cannot be done for drugs which have either very high or high volume of distribution or who are plasma protein bound highly plasma protein bound तो एनी ऑफ दीज ड्रग्स अगर ड्रग हाईली प्लाज्मा प्रोटीन बाउंड है या हाई वॉल्यूम ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है यू कैन नॉट देर इज नो वे दैट यू कैन डू डायलिसिस बिकॉज दे विल नॉट बी देयर इट विल नॉट बी टेकन अप बाय द फ्लूड द डायलाइजेबल फ्लूड जो होता है सो डिजॉक्सिन इज अ ड्रग व्हिच हैज अ वेरी हाई वॉल्यूम ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ठीक है सो डायलिसिस वोंट वर्क हियर एंड रिमेंबर देयर इज अ निमोनिक रिमेंबर अवॉइड डायलिसिस रिमेंबर दिस निमोनिक avoid dialysis theek hai so in drugs ki whenever there is a poisoning you should not you or you cannot what you do cannot do dialysis there theek hai yes it is salicylates so a stands for amphetamines v stands for virapamil O stands for opioids even organophosphates can be removed I stands for imipramine D stands for digoxin and another D stands for diazepam or benzodiazepines so here the correct answer is salicylates theek okay? hai so all these drugs cannot be removed by dialysis so agar hum idhar hi hain so let's start do What is the antidote for digoxin toxicity? 
अगर इसकी टॉक्सिटी देर इज वॉट कैन यू डू वॉट इज द एंटीडोट फॉर डाइजॉक्सिन टॉक्सिसिटी वेरी गुड इट इज डिजी बाइंड यस डिजी बाइंड और डिजी फैप ठीक है सैलिसलेट्स एंटीडोट क्या है यस वी कैन डू हिमोडायलिसिस बट वॉट कैन यू ऑल्सो गिव एज एन एंटीडोट फॉर सैलिसलेट पॉइजनिंग वॉट कैन यू डू हियर लाइक एस्परिन सैलिसलेट की बात करें एस्परिन नो एसिटाइल सिस्टीन विल बी फॉर पैरासिटामॉल ठीक है गुड वरुण इट इज सोडियम बाई कार्बोनेट सोडियम बाई कार्बोनेट ठीक है बिकॉज इट्स एन एसिडिक ड्रग एसिडिक ड्रग कैन बी रिमूव फ्रॉम द यूरिन बाय एल्किलाइजिंग द यूरिन ठीक है सो इट विल टेक अवे द ड्रग रिमेम्बर द कॉन्सेप्ट एसिडिक ड्रग अन आयनाइज इन एसिडिक मीडियम एसिडिक ड्रग इज आयनाइज इन बेसिक मीडियम सो वेन यू वॉन्ट टू रिमूव द ड्रग वॉट यू डू यू हैव टू make it ionized because agar unionized it stays it will be reabsorbed back into the body from the urine so you don't want it to come back into the body so what you do you make the urine alkaline and when you make the urine alkaline whatever salicylate has been excreted out in the urine it will be ionized and it will be removed from the body okay benzodiazepine what is the antidote for benzodiazepine antidote for benzodiazepines yes so very very important antidotes i'll be doing it again also but this tabi jo ya hai let's do this very good it is flumazenil excellent flumazenil very good it's a competitive antagonist so it is flumazenil organophosphate antidote organophosphate very good it is atropine yes atropine and uske baad you can give a cholinesterase reactivator like chloridoxine okay so you can give that so these are the important toxicities must must know you cannot go to the examination hall without doing the antidotes this time also at least two or three antidotes were asked okay chloridoxine is not the antidote the first preferred drug we give is atropine and then you give chloridoxine it is just an Add on to the atropine, ठीक है? But जो primary drug है, that is atropine. So whether it is a carbamate poisoning or whether it is your organophosphates में, you can use atropine. But pyridoxine cannot be used in carbamate poisoning. Only can be used in organophosphate poisoning because the site to which the pyridoxine binds, it is not available for carb in carbamate poisoning. ठीक है? All right. Next question. can you identify the type of antagonism no options here just identify the type of antagonism what type of antagonism is shown here non competitive okay deepak says non competitive yes what about others varun says competitive okay और व्हाट इज द अदर पार्शियल पार्शियल तो एगोनिज्म है ना इट्स नॉट एंटैगोनिज्म वेदर फ्रॉम इट कैन बी अ पार्शियल एगोनिस्ट देयर इज नो टर्म एज पार्शियल एंटैगोनिस्ट वेरी गुड वी मैक्स रिड्यूसेस केएम इंक्रीजेस केएम रिमेंस द सेम केएम विल नॉट इंक्रीज इट रिमेंस द सेम नॉन कॉम्पिटिटिव में केएम इज नॉट अफेक्टेड कॉम्पिटिटिव कॉम्पिटिटिव ऑलराइट चलो लेट्स डू द करेक्ट आंसर द करेक्ट आंसर इज नॉन कॉम्पिटेटिव नॉन कॉम्पिटेटिव सो एज इज सेड ऑलरेडी सो वी मैक्स इन द नॉन कॉम्पिटेटिव इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज वाइल द के एम इज गोइंग टू बी अनफेक्टेड 
ठीक है सो दिस के एम इज गोन बी अनफेक्टेड बट यू सी द स्लोप ये द हाइट इज डिक्रीजिंग सो दे फॉर द वी मैक्स इज गोइंग ऑन डिक्रीजिंग सो इट इज अ नॉन कॉम्पिटेटिव एंटेगनिज्म सो वॉट विल हैपन टू इन केस ऑफ कॉम्पिटेटिव एंटेगनिज्म वॉट हैपन्स इन केस ऑफ कॉम्पिटेटिव एंटेगनिज्म दैट द के एम इंक्रीजेस वी मैक्स इज द सेम ठीक है KM increases, V max remains the same. Yes. So this is one of the type of graphs that can be shown. Yeah, V max. So, this may kya ho sakta hai? The V max will remain the same, but the K axis, yes. So something like this can occur. They'll be shift towards the right. Right? So this will be a competitive antagonism and this will increase. So the dose which is required to get the same uh you know the max v max that will be increased so this is one type of graph jo aapko aa sakta hai the another type of graph that is being asked number of time is this one which is the line weaver burke plot so even this can be shown in the exam so what they will do they will show a graph and they will ask you what type of competition is this so you need to identify the only thing is you have to identify the shape what is the shape of this graph theek hai so what you do is if it is a cross then it is a competitive inhibitor this is it's showing a cross so it's a competitive inhibition if it's a v v shaped it's a non competitive inhibition and you can join like this if it is a u it is a u for uncompetitive inhibition don't go into details ye wala km v max ek one you should know km and v max and then you should know the shape here that is what you should know how to identify this if it's a cross it's a competitive it's a k for competitive or you can see for competitive c for cross theek hai c for competitive and c for cross then u for u this and u for uncompetitive and the other one is v jo reh gaya that is non competitive this is another type of graph that you can get theek hai and you have to remember this this is important to know so दोनों में से एनी टाइप ऑफ ग्राफ कैन बी आस्ट आई दिस वे और दिस वे बट द आंसर रिमेन द सेम के एम बी मैक्स विल नॉट चेंज वो सब सेम रहेगा ओनली फॉर दिस यू नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई द ग्राफ राइट ऑल राइट लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन प्रिस्क्रिप्शन ड्रग्स आर इंक्लूडेड इन प्रिस्क्रिप्शन ड्रग्स आर इंक्लूडेड इन H Y P or X? Which schedule? So, Mrithi says one. Okay. One. H H. Very good. So, all of you have given the correct answer. This is schedule H for prescription. ठीक है. So, what about Y? Y किससे deal करता है? Schedule Y. Schedule Y is for Why? Why? Yes, very good. क्यों क्यों कर रहे हैं? Clinical trials, excellent. Clinical trials, very good. No, not for narcotics. That is Schedule X. ठीक है? For X, that is for psychotropic or narcotics. Danger है ना X? It's danger. Narcotics. So clinical trials, clinical trials के लिए है. Then yes, P. P is for Dealing with the expiry period of a drug, ठीक है? सारी regulations regarding the expiry period, storage, etc. That is with P, right? Yes, with P. Very good. So ये सारे schedules हैं. Schedule H, ठीक है? That is only to be sold by prescription. Schedule G, G means guidance, only to be used under medical supervision, under the guidance of a medical हेल्थ केयर वर्कर और द डॉक्टर ठीक है सो वी कैन यूज दैट स्केड्यूल एक्स डेंजर सो ओनली दीज साइकोट्रोपिक ड्रग्स मॉर्फिन एक्सेट्रा एंड दे यूजुअली कैप्ट अंडर लॉक इन की कैन नॉट बी यूज मिस यूज होता है नहीं तो व्हाई फॉर क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स व्हाई आर वी डूइंग दिस सो इट इज आंसर वी गेट फ्रॉम द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स स्केड्यूल पी कंटेन्स द रेगुलेशंस रिगार्डिंग द एक्सपायरी पीरियड पी 
C. P is for period, expiry period. Schedule W. W is that the drugs can be marketed only under generic name. So that is a schedule W. So these are few important schedules that you must know. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next question. So, which of the following is not an adverse effect of Rytodrine? Hypoglycemia, hypokalemia, tremors or tachycardia. Which is not an adverse effect of Rytodrine? Yes. D. Okay, Varun says D. Tachycardia. All right. Okay. Yes. Let's have more answers. Hypoglyce. Dr. Surendra says hypoglycemia. Okay. Monica says 2. That is hypokalemia. All right. Okay. Yes. Or let's have more answers. Come on. All of you should attempt. It doesn't matter. Right or wrong. It doesn't matter. Just attempt. So you should. Well, yeah, they what is right or dream? To which class does it belong? And then think about the side effects. Simriti says two. Okay, Dr. Surinder says it will cause hyperglycemia. Simriti says two. First, first time you're hearing, Acha. All right. Don't worry. Every time, it's a, they're the first time for everything. Koi baat nahi. So now you will not forget. All right. Okay, so the correct answer is hypoglycemia. This is not an adverse effect of rhytodrine. Okay, so can anybody tell what is rhytodrine? What is rhytodrine? Yes, what is right or dream? No? Beta 2 agonist. It is a beta 2 agonist. Yeah, so but actually kiss class ko belong karti hai. It's a beta 2 agonist. Yes, Samriti, excellent. Right? So what are the major side effects of beta 2 agonists? So that is important because it has been asked. So let's do the major adverse effects of beta 2 agonists. So remember T cube and H cube. So three T's. One, it can cause tremors. Most common side effects of beta 2 agonists are tremors. Tachycardia. Now tachycardia is usually seen at high doses because you know that Whenever you give a drug at high doses, it loses its selectivity and therefore it can act on the beta 1 receptors also. Then tolerance. Tolerance can be seen with long acting drugs. Then H, three H's. One is hypokalemia. Hypokalemia. Okay? So this is because it it uh, gets the potassium inside the cells. Hypokalemia. So, it is used in hyperkalemia. Then, yes, hyperglycemia. Very good. It is hyperglycemia, not hypoglycemia because it causes glycogenolysis. And the third is hypotension. You know, beta 2 receptors are present on the vessels causing vasodilatation. So, this can lead to those are beta blockers. Hyperlipidemia is beta blockers. Alright. So, hypotension. So, T3, H3. Please remember this. These are the peculiar side effects or the most important side effects asked from this beta 2 agonist. This you should know. Isoxpurine hai, ritodrine hai. So, they have these classical side effects to remember. Okay. 
So this is about right order. Let's go on to the next question. What is the renal dose of dopamine? 2 to 5 micrograms per kg per minute, 5 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute, 10 to 20 micrograms per kg per minute. Glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis. Glycogen is breaking down, converting into glucose. Yeah, that is the reason. In the liver, it has the effect. 5 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute, 10 to 20 micrograms per kg per minute, and more than 20. Okay, I am having the responses. That is 5 to 10. Okay, Smriti Varun say 5 to 10. Or So renal dose ka matlab, you understand that it acts on the dopamine receptors, right? Which is present in the renal blood vessels. So that is the meaning of this question. Dopamine acts on three major receptors. Okay? Firstly, dopamine, pala receptors, then beta receptors and alpha. Yeah. So dopamine receptor wala effect is pe 5 to 10. Dr. Surendra says D1. Yeah, D1 is fine, but what is the dose on which it has this effect? Two to five. Okay, great. So this is the correct answer. Two to five. Less than five actually. Yeah, it has the effect on the D1 receptor. Five to ten on the beta receptors. And then on the alpha receptors. Okay? So these are the dose ranges, three doses that you should know. Less dose pay, dopamine 1. So it causes vasodilatation of the renal blood vessels. So it will be very effective in patients of shock. Okay? Shock patients may, or liguria, it will be very effective in those. Then gradually, if you go 5 to 10, it can be used as inotropic and it can be used in congestive heart failures. Now the Last dose is 10 to 20 alpha 1. It is only used in certain cases where uh, you really want to increase the blood pressure of the patient. Then only you will go to 10 to 20. Otherwise, these are the, uh, the 5, 10 uh, milligram, micrograms. Per, that is the dose which is used. So this is another very, very important. Dopamine ke effects according to the doses. Very important to know. Okay. So does dobutamine act on the I and mean, in the same way as dopamine what is the difference between dobutamine and dopamine does dobutamine act in the same manner as dopamine 2 to 5 is for dopamine say this the d1 receptor is 2 to 5 no okay so how does dobutamine act what is the difference no Dobutamine has no effect on dopamine receptors. Okay, dobutamine has no effect. Please remember. Dopa is not in the spelling of dobuta. So it will not act on the dopamine receptor. Is ki spelling mein hai? B. So it will only act on the beta 1 receptor. Remember this, please. Dopamine has dopa in the spelling, it will act on the dopamine receptor. But the butamine does not act on the dopamine receptor. Okay, so remember this. All right. Next question. Yeah, it has no D1 effect. Yes. So match the correct dilution of adrenaline and its use. So, tell me in what concentration is it is used? In which case? It is used in case of when there is failure like CH uh, shock may oliguria. Okay? So, oliguria hai na? So, you can use in the, those cases, low doses. So, oliguria jab hoega, decrease in the urine formation, then you can use this to enhance because it, is a way, uh, it causes renal vasodilatory uh, factor. So, you can use in the low dose in that. Shock with uh, oliguria, it is a drug of choice. You can, this is preferred. 
okay yes one is c okay two is a three is d all right one you're saying is c all right two you're saying is a and three you are saying is d so b regular what about b what about b Yes, you are correct. Both of you are correct. So, 1 is to 1000 for anaphylactic shock. That is absolutely correct. 1 is 10,000 in cardiac arrest. Very good. And 1 is to 2 lakh in along with the local anesthetic. Absolutely correct. So, this regya compresses with epistaxis. Here also, what you can do is, you can use 1 is to 10,000. You can use the same epistaxis carrier. Okay? So, this is very important, the uses of uh, adrenaline in these various life-saving measures are kuch to, it's anaphylactic shock, cardiac arrest and what is the ratio. So, anaphylactic shock ki dose is important of adrenaline. So, 0 0.5 ml of 1 is to 1000 and which root? Very important, intramuscular root. So, this is very, very important. 0 0.5 ml of 1 is to 1000 by intramuscular root. Yes. Yes. Oh, you should not use IV. Okay? Do not write IV because it is too high to be given by IV root, this concentration. Because adrenaline will go act on the beta 1 receptors on the heart and it will cause tachycardias and arrhythmias. So, therefore, this dilution is there. Then 1 is to 10,000 if it's used for cardiac arrest. If you dilute karna, if you have to use it IV, then you have to use it 1 is to 10,000. And along with the epistaxis for epistaxis, you know, because it's a vasoconstrictor, you can use as compresses. Yeah. So 1 is to 2 lakhs is along with local anesthetics. So what, where should you not use adrenaline as a vasoconstrictor along with LA? Contraindication kahan pe hai? Adrenaline All right. So, is it okay now? Okay. Oh, now it's fine. All right. All right. Chalo, let's continue with the where we left from, and this is so. Okay. So yes, I was asking you along with the local anesthetics. All right. Sorry for that. So, along with the local anesthetics, where is it contraindicated? Yes, uh, someone has replied, it is in the end arteries. Yes, so end arteries, mein jahan bhi hoega, it is contraindicated because it can cause necrosis of that vessels. All right, so let's get back to the next one. Let's go to the next one now. Now, another very important, uh, very often asked question. This figure shows the effect of a drug on the blood pressure and the heart rate. So, what is the drug most likely?
B. Norepinephrine, okay. Epinephrine, norepinephrine. B. Monica says norepinephrine. So all someone is saying epinephrine. Okay, Surinder says epinephrine. All right. B. All of you are saying norepinephrine. So can you tell me why are you saying it is norepinephrine? Epinephrine is a beta one blocker. Okay. No, beta one blocker epinephrine no effect on norepinephrine on beta one. Norepinephrine does not heavy have any effect on beta two. ठीक है beta one पे तो effect है. Norepinephrine doesn't have any effect on beta two. ठीक है so you're right it is norepinephrine. But let's see. I'll show you the first. Let's compare and then I'll come back to the same graph. There's a confusion. So this is. Yeah, isoprenaline is only acting on the beta one and beta two receptors. So if you talk about first graph, see this is the yeah, ठीक है? So norepinephrine has an effect on alpha as well as beta. Yes, excellent. Yes, it is a reflex activity because of that it, there is bradycardia. So if you see for norepinephrine, it has effect on the alpha one receptor. So it causes vasoconstriction. Then it has effect on the beta one receptor, so it will lead to increase in the output, and there will be increase in the systolic blood pressure as well. So ultimately, the mean blood pressure is going to rise with norepinephrine. But because of that, there is a reflex bradycardia that you see here. So if we see this graph, it is showing exactly the same. So this is norepinephrine. Let's do the epinephrine. What graph will you get? If there is good evening, Akshay. So, what graph will you get if there is epinephrine? Now, epinephrine acts on both alpha as well as the beta receptors. ठीक है? So, because of the effect on the beta two receptors, the effect here is more here. So, you will see a slight fall in the diastolic. Ultimately, yes, the mean blood pressure is going to be high, but not as much as norepinephrine. ठीक है? So, on because of the beta one stimulation, there is Increase in the heart rate, or uh, reflex tachycardia, you can say. Now, isoprotrenol has an effect on beta one as well as on the beta two. So, beta one effect we all know increase in the systolic. Beta two it has no alpha effect, so there will be fall in the blood pressure. So, ultimately there is a fall in the mean BP, and there is a lot of reflex bradycardia. Right. So, ये तीन graphs you should know and this was asked recently, so therefore this is very very important. Norepinephrine, epinephrine, and isoprotenol. So remember, norepinephrine has no effect on the beta two receptors. All right. So let's go on now to the next one. All of the following are features of atropine poisoning, except all of the features are seen with atropine poisoning, except meiosis, midriasis, hypothermia, hallucinations. Smriti says one. Monica says one. Okay. Meiosis. Okay. One. One. Or oh, very good. So atropine causes what? Atropine causes midriasis and not meiosis. Very good. So atropine is the anticholinergic drug. ठीक है मस्करीनिक ब्लॉकर है anticholinergic. So it is going to cause decrease in all the secretions and it is going to cause midriasis. So contraindicated or in glaucoma and it will cause because of decrease in the secretions in the a decrease in the sweating it can lead to increase in the body temperature and yes it causes hypothermia and this is called as atropine fever okay atropine fever in children this is absolutely contraindicated you cannot give this in children because it can cause atropine fever right and one important thing about atropine you have to tell me what is the treatment for atropine Poisoning because it decreases the sweating, okay? Sweating of the body. So if there is no sweat, 
सो देर विल बी इंक्रीज इन द बॉडी टेम्परेचर स्वेटिंग लीड्स टू कूलिंग ऑफ द बॉडी तो वेन स्वेटिंग नहीं होगी इट लीड्स टू इंक्रीज इन द टेम्परेचर एंड दैट लीड्स टू हाइपरथर्मिया तो इन चिल्ड्रेन एस्पेशली इट कैन लीड टू दिस इज डेंजरस देर एंड कैन कॉज एट्रोपीन फीवर कॉज करता है देर फोर इट इज नॉट यूज इन चिल्ड्रेन येस वेरी गुड अक्षय फॉर एट्रोपीन पॉइजनिंग द ट्रीटमेंट इज फाइस्टो फाइसो स्टिग्मी येस फाइस्टो स्टिग्मी ठीक है very good this is the treatment for antidote for atropine poison and whether you get a question on belladonna poisoning or you get a question on the tura poisoning or you get question on atropine poisoning same answer theek hai same answer physostig same answer is physostig It has because in it leads to uh, when you give atropine, it is stimulatory. Has a stimulatory effect on the central nervous system. If you see scopolamine or yeah, it's ma. So that's why. ठीक है scopolamine as a is sedatory. So you can say it relaxes or depressant depending on the CNS. Atropine has a stimulatory effect on the central nervous system. All right. Next question, please. Pilocarpine reduces the intraocular pressure in the persons with glaucoma by. Yes, you have to use in neurotoxic venom that you will give some a, a cholinesterase reactivator along with atropine. ठीक है, so there you will give neostigmine, not pisostigmine, because there. Yes, if you want to give, if it's a neurotoxic poisoning, wherever you want central nervous system effect, then you give tertiary drug. If wherever you want a peripheral effect, you give a quaternary drug. Pilocarpine reduces yes intraocular pressure by Akshay says four increases the trabecular aqueous outflow. Varun says one reduces the aqueous humor secretion. Doctor Snail says four again increasing the trabecular aqueous outflow. All right. Monica says one reduces the aqueous humor secretion. So the correct answer is pilocarpine reduces or produces its action in glaucoma by increasing the trabecular outflow. Yes, all of you are absolutely correct. Increases the trabecular outflow. So very important are your Anti glock or drugs used in the management of glaucoma. So let's spend some time on discussing the drugs in glaucoma. Very very important. Their side effects, their actions. All right. So mechanism of the action of the drugs in glaucoma. Prostaglandins, uh, analogs like all the prost, latano prost, bimato prost. How do they work? Can you tell me how do the prostaglandins alpha analogs or prostaglandins analogs work? the tano prost mato prost how does it work what is the mechanism in glaucoma pilocarpine humne kar liya physostigmine it increases the trabecular outflow theek hai trabecular outflow very good yes it increases the uveoscleral outflow right so what about the last group carbonic anhydrase inhibitors aproclonidine remonidine beta blocker dipivefrin osmotic diuretics ye sare how do they work how do they work am i stuck very good it decreases the aqueous formation yes it decreases the aqueous humor production or formation aqueous humor production that's the main action of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors theek hai so ye 
very very important to know the mechanisms and equally important to know the side effects okay so let's do the side effects also adverse effects of drugs used in the glaucoma equally effective hai or important rather hai so what is the first drug is stimulol beta blocker the most important side effect it is contraindicated stimulol is contraindicated if patient has it is contraindicated if patient has asthma also alongside asthmatics may beta blockers are contraindicated so timolol will be contraindicated it's a non specific blocker beta 1 beta 2 both it block so therefore it is contraindicated in asthma very good for you then it can lead to stinging sensation in the eye right yes even heart failure and can lead to blepharoconjunctivitis Betoxolol is a, it is safer because it only acts on the beta one receptors. Okay, but it is less efficacious than timolol because most of the receptors there are beta two. So efficacy wise, betoxolol is low, but safety wise, timolol is has a problem. If there is no asthma and no contraindicating conditions, then you would prefer timolol. Blepro conjunctivitis. ठीक है, so that is about with the timolol, beta blockers. The tanoprost, you know that they are the drug of choice for open angle glaucoma. The prostaglandin analog or the drug of choice, and side effects very important with the tanoprost. It causes heterochroma iridis. Yes, heterochroma iridis, which is the pigmentation of the iris. Iris is pigmented. Then second is it can increase the, or it can cause the growth of the eyelashes. ठीक है, hypertrichosis जिसको कहते हैं, growth of the eyelashes. and it can lead to macular edema macular edema so this these are very very important side effects of latanoprost coming to apraclonidine apraclonidine lead, leads to lid retraction lid retraction and it can cause cns depression and apnea apnea in the neonates so therefore cannot use or contraindicated in less than 2 years of age 2 years of age Acetazolamide, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Main side effect is corneal edema. ठीक है and can lead to allergy also corneal edema. Then nitrosodil, which is a row kinase inhibitor. It can cause conjunctival. Uh, hyperemia yeah so these are the few important side effects which you have to these have been asked time and again this was also asked in one of the mcqs that the patient uh, was asthma patient and you need to prescribe a anti glug for glaucoma which of the drugs will you not give So the answer was stimolol. So it can be asked that way. So please remember this for beta blockers. Any beta blocker are contraindicated in cases of asthma. And uh, what are the? Can you tell me another? Let's say what if we give beta blocker to a patient who is diabetic? If you give beta blocker to a patient who is diabetic, 
what is the problem which we see with in those people if you give a beta non selective beta blockers to a diabetic patient what is the major problem we can see with that Yes, major problem which we can see hypoglycemia. The hypoglycemia, yeah, symptoms are not recognized. Yes, it masks the hypoglycemic symptoms in those patients because it is blocking the sympathetic action. So, wo jo bhi sympathetic activity ke karan, whatever signs and symptoms they were getting in hypoglycemia, that cannot be then detected by the patient. So, patient can land into hypoglycemic coma. It's so dangerous. That's one major problem in patients of diabetes mellitus. All right, so let's get on to the next question. Which of the following anti-Parkinsonian drug is available for use as a transdermal patch? Okay, so which is available as a transdermal therapeutic system, TTS, so you can say, rivastigmine, levodopa, rotigotine, yeah, amantadine. Monica says one rivastigmine, Varun says one rivastigmine, okay. Simriti says three rotigotine, all right. Dipinder says three rotigotine, okay. All right. Let's go to the correct answer. Kya hai correct answer? Rajiv says one. So the correct answer here is rotigotine. Rivastigmine is yes available as a patch but this is for Alzheimer's disease. Yes, very good Srimati. It is for Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so it is not for Parkinson's. Parkinsonism may be used rotigotine. So let's do some of the important patches that we have available. Okay, so con con say patches and for what use? All right. So nicotine patch for what do we use the nicotine patch? Can you tell me? You will tell me and I'll fill up this table. Nicotine patch for very good smoking cessation. It is for smoking cessation. Hyoscine patch. Hyoscine patch for. Yes, nicotine patch is for smoking cessation. Yes. Very good, Sandesh. It is for motion sickness. Yes, Dr. Surinder. It is for motion sickness. Very good. Mountain sickness, mountain sickness ke liye acetazolamide. Not for mountain sickness, the drug of choice is acetazolamide. Wo patch nahi hai. Acetazolamide. Theke? Don't confuse between. Teen cheez hai. Motion sickness, mountain sickness, morning sickness. Motion sickness ke liye, hyoscine. Morning sickness ke liye, morning sickness ke liye. Peptic ulcer? What? Which is for peptic ulcer? We don't have a patch, any patch here for peptic ulcer. Alright, let me just first uh, do this. Motion sickness, hyoscine. Mountain sickness, estazolamide. Morning sickness, dicyclamine with vitamin B6. Okay, so remember these three sicknesses. Alright, fentanyl. Fentanyl is a opioid. So it is used for analgesic action. Like chronic pain, just go ahead, cancer pain, all those, and even post operative pain, you can use it, use as an analgesic. So, this has an analgesic use, yes. Estradiol, estradiol, estrogen, progesterones, opioid poisoning. No, no, opioid poisoning, ke liye we have naloxone. Okay, so we don't have a patch, we can use naloxone, which is given by IV root, or naltrexone, we can use by the oral root. Yes, very good. Post-menopausal symmetry. Excellent. This is for hormone replacement therapy in post-menopausal women. 
in post menopausal women right clonidine can be used in hypertension theek hai it's an alpha 2 agonist can be used in hypertension very good yes protecotin abhi humne kiya that is used in parkinsonism rivastigmine ho gaya alzheimer's disease selenil as a patch depression mainly oxybutynin oxybutynin is for overactive bladder ठीक है सिलेजल ठीक है ओवर एक्टिव ब्लाडर कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन यस प्लीज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ड्रग्स एक्ट ऑन साइट वन विच ऑफ द following drugs acts on site 1 ye hai site 1 okay so tell me is it naproxen is it sumatriptan is it lasmiditan or is it ona botulinum toxin two 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 very good all of you are absolutely correct it is sumatriptan so this is a target site for action of tryptans theek okay, hai so this is a target site for tryptans so let's discuss something about migraine so this is the drug of choice for drug of choice for acute severe acute attack of severe migraine theek okay, hai acute attack of severe migraine ke liye we use tryptans If it is mild to moderate, you can give simple analgesics, but यहाँ पे you have to give triptans. ठीक है? So triptans are five HT one B one D agonists. So you know that that is the mechanism of action of triptans. So they will decrease the CGRP release and they will also have they cause vasoconstriction. That is because CGRP is the main neurotransmitter which is involved in the vasodilatory neuropeptide involved in this migraine theek okay? hai all right so dusra aa gaya let's talk about another drug which is your okay, before i go to the other drug which is the drug of choice for prophylaxis of migraine prophylaxis of migraine tell me the drug of choice for prophylaxis of migraine Very good. No, prophylaxis के लिए it is not triptans. Prophylaxis के लिए yes, it is propranolol. Not clonazepine. It is not the drug of choice. It can be used in prophylaxis, but अगर drug of choice आएगी, then you have to use propranolol. ठीक है? So then we have five HT one F agonist. Last last me written be in your five HT one F agonist. last me written also for a cure attack it can be given theek hai yes anti epileptics you can give anti epileptics valproate gabapentin to pyramid they can all be given anti depressants amitriptyline can be given so they can all cgrp antagonists bhi again that you can give for migraine the monoclonal antibodies jo hain elinumab primanizumab that also you can give but drug of choice ki baat kare to drug of choice is propranolol ठीक है, so these are the very important topic which is sumatriptan drug of choice for severe attack, acute but severe, acute अगर mild है, moderate है, then we use normal simple analgesics, MSAs, we can use combinations, and prophylaxis के लिए we use propranolol. एक और group of drug है that you can use if triptans can't be given which is ergot alkaloids. ठीक है? But the main problem with ergot alkaloid, they are very very potent vasoconstrictors, so they can lead to ergotism. 
okay the dry gangrene of the 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 you know the terminals the where the blood hands or there are and hands and feet ke dry gangrene so this called as ergotism so that is one of the major problem with ergot alkaloids and they also stimulate the nausea vomiting already migraine patient has a lot of nausea and vomiting and they're further going to accentuate the you know, nausea vomiting last minute is a 5ht1 f agonist so these receptors are also present just like 5ht1 b receptors hai 1d 1b 5ht1 f is also present here and their role is same that they are going to uh, cause the this vaso uh, constrictor effect of the cerebral vessels that is their role because tryptans ka jo ek main drawback hai it not only causes vaso constriction of the cerebral blood vessels but also all over the body so uh in patients who already have you know myocardial infarction in those people we cannot give hypertensive patients because it will also cause vasoconstriction there so last minute then is free of those side effects it is uh, especially going to only affect the cerebral blood vessels so only cause vasoconstriction over there so that is the role of last minute All right. Next, we are coming to another very important topic. So here we are going to do most of the antidotes here. So which of the following poisoning is wrongly matched with its antidote? Whether it is methotrexate with folinic acid, ethanol with methanol, beta blocker with glucagon, and morphine with naloxone. One. Okay. A, all right, got it. It's A or one. Two, okay. Three. Two, three. All right. So the correct answer is. Two. Why? Can you tell me why is this correct answer? Kya galat hai isme? What is wrong in this? Or, or is it just a guess? Kya galat hai? So poisoning with its aha uh -huh, exactly Sandesh excellent. This is old type. This is. Ethanol poisoning may we cannot use methanol. Yes, very good, Smriti. Methanol poisoning may you can use ethanol. No, the the, the it should be like this. Okay, so poisoning should be of methanol because ethanol you cannot methanol already is toxic. You cannot use it for uh, as a antidote for any poison. So rest all are correct. Methotrexate. The antidote is folinic acid, beta blocker, it is glucagon, morphine, it is naloxone. Only this is, I just changed the thing. So, for methanol poisoning, the drug of choice actually is omeprazole, but the second option is ethanol. So, I am going to now give you a list of drugs with the antidote. So, we are going to discuss this. Patakat, this already we have done. So, let's do this fast and revise this. Organophosphate carbamate already done. The antidote is antidote is yes. Very good. Atropine, excellent. So the Tura Belladonna atropine. The antidote we discussed already is physostigmine. Very good. Digoxin. Maybe we have discussed before. Yes, Simriti. Yes, Sandesh. Very good. Pam. Yes. Pam only for organophosphate. Not for carbamate. So, atropine for both. Very good. Digibind. Digoxin. Digibind. Yes, Varun. Excellent. Beta blockers. Spironolactone. No. Beta blockers. Digifab like Sakta and Digibind, both are the same. Very good. Glucagon. Benzodiazepines. Yes, very good. Glucagon, all of you are correct. Benzodiazepines.
Lumazenil, excellent. Lumazenil. Morphine. Morphine. Naloxone. Methanol or ethylene poisoning. Methanol or ethylene poisoning. All of you are correct. Naloxone is the correct option. Methanol or ethylene poisoning. Ye jo abhi abne we were discussing. So what is the? Ethanol, okay. Usse bhi better option. Ethanol, second choice. Very good. Formipazole. Formipazole. That should be the first. Agar if both are written in the options, you will mark Formipazole. If either of them is written in the option, then you will mark whichever is given. But if both are given, then you will first prefer Formipazole because it is the, uh, actually, in, it will inhibit the conversion of the methanol to the toxic compounds. Ethanol will just act as a diversion. Okay, so the more uh, specific antidote we are going to talk about, that is Formipazole. Okay, tricyclic antidepressants and salicylates. Tricyclic antidepressant and salicylates. Sodium by carbonate. Very good, Varun. Yes, sodium by carbonate. Paracetamol. Sodium by carbonate. Yes, paracetamol. All very good. Yes, it is N acetyl cysteine. Excellent. N acetyl cysteine. Very good. All of you. Excellent. Heparin. Shabash. Heparin. Keep it up. Very good. Heparin. Very good, Sumilti. Protamine. Sulfate. Shabash. Very good. Protamine sulfate. Warfarin. Warfarin. Yes, protamine sulfate is the antidote for heparin. Very good. For warfarin, very good, Renu. Vitamin K. K1. To be more specific, vitamin K1. Yes. Alright. Antidote nahi hai, you can give it. FFPs can be given, but antidote nahi hai because it's very expensive, so you cannot give. Yes, it is better. Definitely better. Expensive both hai. You can't, every patient will not be able to afford it. So, antidote hume itna expensive karenge, to fir it will be a problem. Hai? So, vitamin K can reverse the effects because warfarin kya karta hai? It actually is going to oppose the effect of vitamin K. So, if you want to overcome the effects of vitamin K, uh, warfarin, then you give vitamin K. Yes, it is very quick acting, FFPs, definitely, I agree. Yeah. Okay, Epixaban, Rivaroxaban. These are 10 A inhibitors, you know, Epixaban or Rivaroxaban. Yeah. Very good. It is Endixanet Alpha. Excellent. Oh, it also has XA. Yes, of course it will. Dabigatrin, all of you, good. Dabigatrin, yes, and Dixanid alpha is for epixaban, rivaroxaban. Dabigatrin, very good, Simriti. It is Idaru C. Zumab. Idaru map. Cyanide poisoning. Cyanide poisoning. Cyanide poisoning is hydroxo cobalamine or you can give nitrites plus Sodium thiosulfate. Yes, so both are correct. Hydroxocobalamine or nitrites plus sodium thiosulfate. 
methotrexate folinic acid or you can call it mucovorin or methotrexate poisoning yeah arsenic and mercury poisoning Dimercaprol. Okay, so these are the most one of the very very important antidotes. So remember, one or two antidotes are definitely asked in the exam. So you should always these should be on your tips antidotes. Okay, so don't get confused in any of these antidotes. It's where there should be no mistake at least in the antidotes in the questions. All right. Now let's come to the last question of the day today. Major mechanism of propylthiouracil in hyperthyroidism is. So what is the major mechanism of propylthiouracil in hyperthyroidism? Whether it inhibits the iodide trapping, inhibits the oxidation and coupling of the thyroid hormones, or inhibits the thyroid hormone release, or it causes fibrosis of the thyroid follicles. Okay, Akshay says it inhibits the thyroid trapping. Okay. Varun says also the same. Simriti says 1. Sandesh says 3. Renu says 1. A, yes, or any other? Okay. 1. Okay, so most of you are going with the first one. But this is not the correct answer. The major mechanism of action of propylthiouracil is the second. It inhibits the oxidation and coupling because this is carried out by an enzyme called as thyroid peroxidase. So propylthiouracil, carbimazole, methimazole, they all work by this mechanism. The major mechanism is that they inhibit the thyroid peroxidase enzyme which will Therefore, inhibit the oxidation and the coupling of the thyroid hormones. This is the major action. A core action which is only seen with propylthiouracil and not with methimazole or cabimazole. And that is that it also inhibits the peripheral conversion. Peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. You know that T3 is the active form which is going to produce the effect. T4 is not the active form. So, T4, no, it should be T4 to T3, not T3 to T4. Because T4 is the inactive form, so active form is T3. Okay? So in hyperthyroidism, we want to decrease the active form, which is T3. So it will inhibit this peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. Okay? Right. So the first johera inhibits the iodide trapping. That is the drug which we no longer use. Thiocyanates, nitrates, perchlorates. So they are very, very toxic drugs. We no longer use them. The second one, the drugs which inhibit the thyroid hormone release are your drugs like iodine, iodides, the glucose iodine. That belongs to this category. And these are the fastest acting. Fastest acting drugs. So I'll take you through this classification. You see this one. So there are drugs which are going to inhibit the release synthesis of the hormone. So these are the ones which inhibit the thyroid peroxidase enzyme. So therefore that is the major action and propylthyrosyl also inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3. Not seen with these two. Only with propylthyrosyl. That's why it is also useful in thyroid storm. Drugs inhibiting the thyroid uh, iodide trapping are these, but they are very, very toxic drugs. So, no longer used currently. Drugs which inhibit the hormone release are your iodides, Lugol's iodine and all. And therefore, they are one of the fastest acting drugs. So, a question out there, which is the fastest acting antithyroid drug? This is your, and um, these iodides. Because, jo the first group, hyperpylthyrosyl, methimazole, cabimazole, they have a lag period. They will take time to produce their effect. Because the already synthesized thyroid hormones are not going to be affected by this. They will only inhibit the formation of new thyroid hormones. So they will take some time to produce their effect. 
while jo iodides hai they will immediately stop the release of the formed thyroid hormones that's why they will act very fast so that's why very important drugs if you give it in thyroid storm the other effect of these drug is that it also causes it makes the gland very firm and less vascular it will decrease the blood supply of the gland so it becomes very firm and less vascular so if a person has is uh, needs a surgery so before the surgery you can give these drugs they will make the gland less vascular so when the surgery is being performed there is less chances of bleeding so less loss of blood is there function of propranolol in thyrotoxicosis you mean thyroid storm this is because we want to decrease the uh, thyroid hormone so it will inhibit the synthesis but agar thyroid storm mein jo we don't use methimazole and cabimazole because it will not be very immediate effective so we use only propyl thyrosine for the reason that it will block the conversion of t4 to t3 and t3 you know is a active form active form matlab hota this is the t3 is the form which is going to act uh, or produce the effects not the t4 so it will be, uh, inhibit this conversion of t4 to t3 that is a propranolol you saying sorry propranolol basically is also it's a beta blocker it has two actions one it decreases a sympathetic activity because yes mai aap there is increase in the sympathetic activity in the thyrotoxicosis catecholamines the jo receptors hote they become super sensitive to the effect of catecholamines so they will decrease the sympathetic uh, activity in this all the signs and symptoms will be decreased tachycardia etc that will be decreased secondly propranolol also has a secondary effect of decreasing the peripheral conversion it has two action it also decreases the peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 so it has two actions one is this and second is it decreases the sympathetic overactivity so we can avoid the arrhythmias which can occur because of thyrotoxicosis these are two major actions or beneficial effects of propranolol and thyrotoxicosis okay so this inhibits the hormone release that i said fastest acting drug hai and the second role is that it makes the gland very firm and less vascular easy to perform surgery bleeding will be much less theek hai blood loss much less so that is the role of the third group fourth is that we can use radioactive iodine and radioactive iodine what does it do it uh, emits the rays it emits gamma rays which basically they are going to there are two types of beta rays and gamma rays and one is only for diagnostic purpose the other rays actually are going to perform the effect so they will destroy the thyroid tissue so this is basically a permanent effect theek hai so your permanent effect is so this is a substitute for surgery gen patients may you cannot perform surgery like elderly patients who have some cardiac problems the surgery is not uh, you know cannot be performed there you will give these drugs as compared to the surgery but they should not be given in young people like less than 35 years of age because they have a tendency it is it can cause risk of cancers and pregnancy definitely it is contraindicated so in those tissue uh, people you cannot use this So it is just an alternative for uh, surgery because it's a permanent uh, cure. They can say, and other if you give a higher dose, patient can go into hypothyroidism, and then you'll have to give levothyroxine for life long. So this is the uh, role or classification of all the anti-thyroid drugs, and just remember this. And one more thing, yah pe let's discuss on kari rehen, which is the drug of choice in pregnancy. Hy and you know which anti-thyroid drug is the drug of choice in pregnancy. quickly then we'll actually finish this anti thyroid drug of choice in pregnancy very good it is propyl thyrosine drug of choice in pregnancy first trimester in first anti thyroid ki baat kare it is in the first trimester we cannot give yes first trimester second and third may you can continue with methimazole cabimazole they are contraindicated in first trimester why because they are teratogenic drugs and the major problem which is teratogenicity is kaun si hoti hai 
Aplasia cutis. Very good. Aplasia cutis. The skin, if you see, upper stay head pe, there'll be missing skin is missing. Aplasia cutis. It can cause coronal atresia, esophageal atresia, fetus may hypothyroidism. That are the others. But classical is aplasia cutis. This is another very very important question from this group of guys. All right. So with this, we will end today's session, and we'll resume with the questions tomorrow. Okay, so we will have some more. We'll cover some more topics and more questions in the similar way tomorrow. So do join in tomorrow. I'll be taking a session at five p.m. tomorrow instead of this. Uh, vitals may I think very soon. Almost we've finished uh, recording the whatever it was left. I have almost so maybe another week or so. हो जाएगा. ठीक है संदेश. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope uh, study hard and you know take all these comprehensive course. Sure, I will. I will. Uh, I'm going to yeah take that also. I will take definitely. So please revise, go through all these questions. The important topics are again. You can uh, you know it is a feedback to you that whatever topics you were comfortable with and you could answer. uh then they are your best topics and jahan pe you found that you are lacking go and revise those topics again put these questions over there so if you need a little bit more revision because this is just for your revisions only okay so even if you are not able to answer kuch questions today it's okay it is a learning phase that is where you have to put in a little bit of more effort theek hai all right thank you so much everyone see you tomorrow do join in and then we'll continue with the session take care god bless study hard